continue with Surah Al-Thalatha, the three principles of Shaykh Al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah, with the explanation of Shaykh Salih Al-Fawzan, Hafid of Allah. Then we were on, we were on the second initial treatise at the beginning of the book. And last time we had the point, which is the second point of the three, which is obligatory upon every Muslim male and female to know. The second point was, أَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى أَنْ يُشْرَكَ مَعَهُ فِي عِبَادَتِهِ, في عبادته أَحَدٌ لا ملك لا ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل. The second point that Allah is not pleased that anyone should be associated associated along with Him in His worship. Neither any angel drawn close nor any prophet sent. So just as a quick summary of what we had, then Shaykh Fawzan amongst the things that he mentioned was the point that if shirk, this of course shows us the obligation of worshipping Allah alone, of worshipping Allah, and of making our worship purely and sincerely for Allah, of worshipping Allah alone, and not committing any, any shirk. And that if shirk is found along with ibadah, if shirk is found along with worship, then that ibadah, that worship, is rendered null and void. It's rendered null and void from the person. And that the person's worship, his ibadah, will only count as worship, ibadah, if that person is upon tawheed, not upon shirk. Otherwise, his, his worship will be null and void. And that having iman, believing in Allah, is not sufficient until the person rejects at tawhud rejects all the false objects of worship. And the point that it does not make any difference whether the one who is associated in worship with Allah, whoever it is, it will make no difference, except the ruling will be the same. Anything or anyone is associated along with Allah in worship, then that is shirk, and the person's worship will not be accepted. Whether it be an angel drawn close, or a prophet, or anyone less than that, it will not be accepted, it will be shirk. And in this there is a refutation of those who say that those who say we take the dead beloved servants of Allah, the awliya of Allah, we direct certain acts towards them, acts of devotion towards them, or to draw us closer to Allah, that we only take them as intercessors with Allah, that we do certain acts of worship towards them, not to worship them in themselves, but so that they will draw us closer to Allah. Shaykh Fawzan makes this very clear, this argument of the people of shirk is exactly the same argument as the people in the times of ignorance. It's exactly the same argument. For those people in the times of ignorance, they did not believe that those things which they directed worship to were lords, were lords besides Allah, were creators besides Allah, gave provision besides Allah. They did not believe any of that. Rather, they said as their excuse, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى We only direct worship towards them so that they will draw us closer to Allah. So the argument is the same and the ruling is the same. <coughs> then the Imam, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, he continues, having mentioned this point, he gives the evidence. And he says in what occurs on page 56 of the Lebanese edition, on page 44 of the Egyptian print, وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Al-Aya in Surah Al-Jinn He said, and the proof is his saying, He the Most High وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Meaning, and that the places of prayer are to be for Allah alone. So do not invoke anyone along with Allah. And that the places of prayer are to be for Allah alone, so do not invoke, do not call upon, do not worship, do not pray to anyone along with Allah. 
before going into the explanation of Shaykh al Fawzan, just with regard to that ayah, and the great Muhassir Muhammad ibn Jarir al Tabari, he explains that this ayah, which is the 18th ayah of Surah Al Jinn, Surah Al Jinn, the 72nd surah, this being ayah 18, in meaning this ayah is connected to the first ayah. The meaning is a continuation from the first ayah. The first ayah being, Qul uhiya ilayya anna hustama'a nafarum min al jinn. With the explanation, say, it has been revealed to me that a group of the jinn listened. And they listened to the revelation. They listened to the Quran being recited by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the, the meaning of this ayah is connected, meaning, and it has also been revealed to me, أن المساجد وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو مع الله أحدا. And it has also been sent by revelation to me. That the places of prayer are to be for Allah alone, so do not invoke anyone along with Allah. As another small side point, then Al Baghawi and Ibn Kathir mention, and some of the other scholars mention, that the word Wa'anna al Masajid, this word Masajid, there are two explanations of the scholars for this word. The first of them is that it is Masajid, the plural of Masjid, the well known word. Masjid, masjid, the places of the prayer, in the places of prayer. And the second is that this word masjid is the plural of masjad, which means those parts of the body which perform sajda, which perform prostration. Obviously, both these meanings falling into what is correct. <coughs> and the, then the explainers such as al baghawi explained, mean that the seven bones of the body, which the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, have to perform sajda. And finally, before moving into the explanation of Shaykh Fawzan, then Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabiri, Hafizahullah, he said in explanation of this ayah, al-masajid means the places of the prayer. The places of the prayer are to be for Allah alone. So he said the places means the places of the prayer. Whether they be buildings, or pieces of land, which do not contain a building. And they are called masajid, literally places of sajda. They're called these places of prayer, for them. they're called literally places of sajda, places of prostration. Because they are places where prostration, sajda, is performed. And the sajda, the sujood, is the most noble one of the pillars of the prayer, and the greatest one of it. And that's why the places of prayer, the mosques, are called masajid, places of sajda. As for the explanation of Shaykh Salih, Salih al-Fawzan, Hafizullah, then he said in explanation of this point, Allah is not pleased, as we said, being on page, this being on page 56, page 44 of the Egyptian edition, Allah is not pleased that anyone should be associated with him, no matter who it is. And this is clear, this is sarih, this is stated clearly, in the book and in the sunnah. However, to one who uses the intellect and who thinks carefully. It's very clear in the book, this, this matter is very clearly stated in the Quran and in the sunnah. But it will be, only, it will be very clear to a person who uses his intellect and yet adabbar, he who thinks carefully. And who discards at taqlid al a'ma and discards blind following and the use of false and futile excuses <coughs> and who is alert to his own benefit then Shaykh Fawzan said and the proof that Allah is not pleased that anyone else besides him should be associated with him no matter who it is is his saying he the most high the ayah. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا With the explanation. And that the places of prayer are to be for Allah alone, so do not invoke anyone along with Allah. Shaykh Fawzan said, المساجد, the mosques, are the houses of Allah. <coughs> And they are the places which are prepared for the salah, for the prayer. And they are the most beloved of places 
to Allah. The mosques, they are the most beloved of places to Allah. And as a side point here, then the Shaykh Hafizullah is indicating what occurs in the hadith reported by Muslim, as hadith 671, from the narration of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَحَبُّ الْبِلَادِ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَسَاجِدُهَا وَأَبْغَضُ الْبِلَادِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَسْوَاقُهَا That the most beloved places upon the earth to Allah are its mosques. And the most hated of the places upon the earth to Allah are its marketplaces. So Shaykh al Razan, therefore, so he said, speaking about the mosques, the masajid, and they are the most beloved of places to Allah. And they are houses which Allah has commanded should be raised and in which His name should be mentioned. Then these mosques, these masajid, must be made a place for the worship of Allah alone. Nothing for other than Allah must occur within them. So graves are not to be built in them, nor tombs. Because the Prophet Sallallahu cursed those who did that. And he informed that this is the practice of the Jews and the Christians. And he forbade us from that. At the end of his life, whilst he was in the throes of death, alayhi salatu was salam, with his saying whilst he was dying, he, he said, Allah inna man Allah inna man kana qablakum kanu yattakhidun al-qubur masajid He said, indeed those who came before you used to take the graves as places of prayer. So. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, he said this whilst he was dying. Whilst he was actually dying. Allah fala ta'takhidu al-qubur masajid fa inni anhaakum an dhalik Indeed, do not take the graves as places of prayer, for I certainly forbid you from that. In a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Muslim as hadith 532 from a hadith of Jundub ibn Abdullah al Bajali. And Shaykh Barzan quotes of further evidence. He said, and he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Allahi ala al Yahudi wa Nasara. اتَّخَذُوا قُبُورَ أَنْبِيَائِهِمْ مَسَاجِدِ Allah's Messenger وسلم, said Allah's curse is upon the Jews and the Christians they took the graves of their prophets as places of prayer in a footnote they mention reported by Al-Bukhari Asadi 435 and 436 and by Muslim Asadi 531 from a hadith of Aisha and of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu Shaykh al-Fawzan said so the masajid, the mosques it is obligatory that they be purified from traces of shirk and idolatry and that they not be built upon graves and they not be built upon the graves nor should the dead be buried in them after they have been built. Rather, they should be places of, for the worship of Allah alone. The prayer should be established in them, and the name of Allah should be mentioned in them, and the Quran should be recited in them, and beneficial lessons should be established in them. And, the pe and people should remain in them for worship. This is the role of the mosques. As for having awthan, as for having idols, objects of worship, besides Allah, in them. As for having in them awthan, idols which are worshipped besides Allah, 
then these are not mosques. In such places where there are th- other things which are worship besides Allah, these are not masajid. These are not mosques. These are mashahid. Mashahid of shirk. These are shrines of shirk. Even if their people call them masajid. Even if their people call them mosques. Because Allah says, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The same ayah, the explanation, and that the mosques, the places of prayer, are for Allah. Shaykh Fawazan said, meaning, not for anyone else besides him. And because the mosques, they are the place where the people gather and meet, so it is obligatory that they should be pure and free of shirk and bid'ah, innovations and khurafat, false superstitions. Because the people acquire knowledge in them and worship. So if anything from shirk and false superstitions are found in the mosques, then they, the people, will be influenced by that. And they will propagate it upon the earth. So therefore it is obligatory that the mosques should be purified from shirk. And the greatest of them, the greatest one of them, and the greatest one of all the mosques, is Al-Masjid Al-Haram. It's the sacred mosque. It's the mosque in Mecca. Mosque in Mecca. And the greatest of them is the sacred mosque Just as Allah, the mighty and majestic, or rather he said, just as Allah, the majestic and most high, commanded that it should be purified. We refer to the sacred mosque in Makkah. Allah the most high, Allah the majestic and most high, commanded that it be purified. He the most high said, وَإِذْ بَوَّعْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ أَنْ لَا أَنْ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِي شَيْئًا وَطَحِّرْ بَيْتِيَ لِلْطَائِفِينَ وَالْقَائِمِينَ وَالْرُكَّ السُّجُودِ Surah Al-Hajj, the 22nd Surah, Ayah 26. With the explanation, And remember, when we showed the site for the house, And remember when we showed the site for the house to Ibrahim, And commanded him, That you should not associate anything along with me, and purify my house for those people who are performing tawaf and for those who are standing in prayer and performing the bowing and the prostration. Sheikh Razan said, commenting upon the ayah, purify it from what? Purify it from shirk and from innovations and false superstitions. Just as it is also to be purified from an najasat wal qadurat, just as it is to be purified also from impurities and filthy things. <coughs> so he's saying, He the Most High, La tad'u. Do not call upon, do not invoke. Shaykh al Fawzan said, The La here, La tad'u. The La is La, La unahiya. The no of prohibition. The no showing a, a forbiddance. And the tad'u is a present tense verb. Fi'l mudari' majzum bila'un nahiya. Wa alamatu jazmihi hadfun noon. He gives a, an Arabic grammar point. He said tad'u is a present tense verb which is majzum. Which could be commented to be in the justive form, in the shortened justive form. Because of the la, because of the prohibiting la. And the sign that it is majzum in this justive form is the removal of the noon. Of the noon. I mean the normal word as the Sheikh then explained, he said because in origin it would be tad'un. Tad'un. So the factor which makes it Majzum enters upon it, which is the la, do not, the prohibiting la. So it becomes la tad'u. 
Do not invoke. Do not call upon. Do not invoke. Sheikh Fawzan said. So do not do not invoke, O oh people, anyone, along with Allah. Do not supplicate for help from anyone along with Allah, such as saying, Ya Allah, Ya Muhammad. Such as saying, O oh Allah, O oh Muhammad. Ya Allah, Ya Abdul Qadir. O oh Allah, O oh Abdul Qadir. Or saying, Ya Abdul Qadir, Ya Muhammad. Or saying, O oh Abdul Qadir, O oh Muhammad. All these being praises calling for help. Don't say any of these praises. Or the like of that. Because Allah is not pleased with that. And He will not accept it. And His saying, He the Most High, Ahadan, La tad'u ma'allahi Ahadan. Literally, Ahadan, anyone. Shaykh Razan said, bring me another grammar point. He said, this word Ahadan is nakira fi siyaqin nahi. Fata'ummu kulla ahadin. The Shaykh said, this word Ahadan is indefinite form in the context of a prohibition. So therefore, it is general to everyone. This is an Arabic grammar point. It's a word which is an in indefinite form. If a prohibition enters upon it, then it's, that word is general to whatever it covers. So the Sheikh said, so here meaning, anyone, do not invoke anyone at all. The Sheikh said, no one is accepted, neither any angel drawn close, nor any prophet sent, nor any idol, nor any object of worship, nor any grave, nor any Sheikh, nor any Wali, beloved servant of Allah, nor any living person, nor any dead person, no matter who it is. It is general. The prohibition here is general. <laughs> Do not invoke anyone along with Allah. Sheikh Razan said, so it is general covering everyone who is called upon besides Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا So do not call upon, do not invoke anyone along with Allah. The ayah from Surah Al-Jinn, 18th ayah. 18th, 18th ayah. Ayah of the text. So this ayah shows that ibadah, that worship will not benefit except with tawheed. Except that the person is upon tawheed, the worship of Allah alone. alone. And that if shirk is mixed with it, if shirk is mixed with the ibadah, with worship, then it becomes null and void. And it will be an affliction for the person. Then he the Most High said, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ The explanation, and the places of prayer are for Allah. Shaykh Fawzan said, it is obligatory that they be built khalisa, purely and sincerely, that the intention of the one building them should not be a riya to show off or a sum'a to be heard of or takhleed al-dhikr or to be remembered as they say or to be just athar al-islamiyya or to be just islamic antiquities all of this is futile in those who build mosques, their intention should not be any of these things. <coughs> mosques and masajid should be built for ibadah, for worship, and with the intention of worship. So he mentions two things here. They should be built for the purpose of the performance of worship, ibadah, and they should be built with the intention of worship. And the intention in them should be purely and sincerely for Allah the Mighty and Majestic. And also, they should be built from good and pure earnings. They should not be built from forbidden earnings. Because Allah the Mighty and Majestic, or they said, because they are for Allah, they should not be built from 
forbidden earnings. Because they are for Allah, the mighty and majestic. And in Allah la yaqbalu illa tayyiba. And Allah, as occurs in the hadith, Allah does not accept except what is good and pure. And in a footnote here, they mention this hadith. It's reported by Muslim, hadith 1015, from a hadith of Abu Hurairah, radiallahu anhu. With the wording that Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ طَيِّبٌ لَا يَقْبَرُ إِلَّا طَيِّبًا To the end of the hadith. Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, O oh, oh mankind, Allah is tayyib, Allah is pure. He does not accept except what is good and pure. Shaykh Barzan said in the explanation, so mosques are, so the mosques are to be built from lawful spending and the intention of their builders is to be khalisa, is that it is to be done purely and sincerely seeking the face of Allah, the mighty and majestic. He should not intend by building it to obtain praise from the people or to be remembered or for show or to be heard of because building the mosques is ibadah, is worship and worship it is obligatory that it should be done purely and sincerely for Allah the mighty and majestic <coughs> 